All right, well, believe it or not, it's been 10 years since the Asian financial crisis hit countries in the region, sending uh, shockwaves across the globe at the time. For more, let's go to Sharon Jit Lale, who joins us from our bureau in Singapore. Um, Sharon, what are people saying 10 years on? Well, they're not saying too much. Uh, essentially, there's a report from the Asian Development Bank, and, and they're saying quite a bit. They're suggesting that the country's worst hit by the crisis haven't fully recovered the levels of investment they would have enjoyed. Of course, the report was also fairly upbeat, but it did say growth in the five countries worst hit by the crisis was cut by about 2.5%. The crisis hit Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia, South Korea, as well as Thailand. And corruption in many of these economies uh, has also, to some extent, held them back. Along with that, the ADB also forecasting growth in Asia. developing economies uh, not as robust as last year. In 2007, it's expected to grow 7.6%. That's down from 8.3%. Last year, uh, ADB also expecting China's economy to cool just slightly, still at double digits, rates of about 10%, though. And as far as India is concerned, growth is also likely to slow down this year. But the ADB expects the economy to pick up next year, even though inflation in India remains high and the agricultural sector fairly weak. But overall, the bank is optimistic about the region saying that growth is more sustainable with inflation under control and the pressure of overheating is gradually easing so a big difference from a decade ago Sally yeah absolutely a very significant anniversary well let's have a look now at some some sort of corporate news going on where you are Citigroup still expanding rapidly in Asia especially India what is it up to that's right. Uh, the city group saying it's planning to open more branches in India and uh, with a much bigger operation, obviously, the lender will also increase the number of staff it hires in the country. City group uh, likely to move some of its uh, back office work to India, where it already has quite a large call center. Expanding in uh, Asian countries like India, of course, is part of Citigroup's ambition to increase the share of international business in its total revenue to 60% from its current 45. But uh, Citigroup has declined to comment on all those media reports that uh, it may slash some 15,000 jobs or about 5% of its global workforce to, uh, to cut costs. And that's it uh, here from Asia. Back to you in London, Sally. Thank you very much indeed, Sharon, in Singapore. Well, let's take a look at the markets now in that region and see how they're being impacted by the various stories uh, swilling around. And I'm afraid to say it's the news out of the U.S. yesterday about its housing market that's really being uh, weighed heavily by investors in Asia. Most are basically looking to see this as a sign that there is perhaps more weakness there than was thought in the housing market. Therefore, let's sell off the exporters in Asia that make their money from the world's biggest economy. So you're seeing quite a bit of weakness in Japan, Hong Kong, the similar story. Mixed picture though, South Korea managing to keep its head above water despite the fact that its biggest exporter, Samsung Electronics, has been hit pretty hard. What's the news? Well, the U.S. housing market, new starts, uh, home sales uh, came through very disappointingly yesterday and it really hit the markets in Europe as well, which we'll see later in the show. But just for now, there's the currency markets just to so you show you the impact that's had on the U.S. dollar. Time, let's to look at some other stories now making the news in business. It's being reported there's a boardroom rift at Sanofi Aventis over the possible purchase of Bristol Myers Squibb. A to report, Sanofi's chairman and his chief executive are split over whether to proceed with a bid. The company last month shelved preliminary talks over a possible offer because of a legal dispute over a major drug the companies have been collaborating on. It's thought that if the chairman has his way, the talks could be resumed once the wrangle is settled. Plans for a merger of two of the UK's biggest house builders could be in for a spot of subsidence. George Wimpey and Taylor Woodrow have agreed to team up in a deal worth $10 billion, but now it's thought Persimmon, which is the country's biggest house builder, is also considering a deal with Taylor Woodrow. That, of course, could leave Wimpey completely out in the cold. Consolidation in the sector has been the no seen the number of UK house builders fall from 10 to 30 in the last decade. And let's look now at another merger story that has experienced more twists and turns than perhaps a Formula One racing track. Philip Hampshire is at the London Stock Exchange with some of the details. We're talking about the, the big energy story in Spain with lots of different players from around the world trying to get a piece of the action. What's the latest? Well, the latest set of uh, twists that we've got here relates through to uh, Indesa's situation late last night. 
The third largest shareholder in the company, a Spanish savings bank called Caja Madrid, agreed that it would pass on its 10% shareholding in the company to which side in the uh, saga? Well, to E.ON. It came up with a, uh, an agreement with them whereby it would hold on to the voting rights for those shares for the next two years. Meanwhile, E.ON would actually own the stock and would pay over its 40 euro a share deal. Now, this actually gives E.ON a significant minority stake in the business. Plus, of course, any uh, companies that want to sell on their shares to it over the remaining week that they have before its tender offer expires. And that puts uh, the other corporations in a very difficult position. Sure, we've got Axiona and Enel with around 46% of the business right now. However, today the CNMV, which is the Spanish stock market regulator, is going to come out with its decision on what it thinks about the fact that they've been building up stakes in the company while there's been a takeover bid going on, despite the fact that they didn't put in their own offer. This is completely contrary to Spanish takeover rules. And already they've been told they wouldn't be allowed to put in a rival takeover uh, deal for around six months or so. They were told that back on uh, Friday. But of course, in certain jurisdictions, this kind of thing could be considered insider trading. And the CNMV has to come out with its ruling on exactly what it thinks uh, should be done here. If it doesn't come down on Eon's side and really sort of get these two companies uh, a little bit of a telling off, then it could le leave itself open to nobody obeying the rules in future, Sally. All right, well, tell us now what uh, the Prince has been up to. And by that, we're, I don't mean Prince Charles, Harry or William. Exactly. No, this is uh, Prince Awalid uh, bin Talal, who is the largest shareholder over in Citigroup. His current situation over there is that he's been complaining that they just haven't been seeing enough growth come through lately. And indeed, if we have a look at the share price over the uh, last five years, you'll see that it's been trading for five years, broadly speaking, in a range between 40 US dollars and where it is right now at around the 50, 51 US dollar mark. He's looking to see 50 15,000 job cuts come through and newspaper reports in the UK say he's going to get those. Most of them could come in London. All right. Thanks very much, Philip, for the latest there from the London Stock Exchange. Now move on and take a closer look at the news out of the US about its housing market and the impact it actually had on Wall Street. Doshini David sent us this update from New York. Hello, and it was a mixed finish on the New York stock markets after some housing data came out. Let's take a closer look at what's been happening on Wall Street. Well, on Monday, we had some housing data out, pretty weak figures, reinforcing the idea that the housing slowdown is still very much in evidence here in America. And that, of course, prompted the markets to think more about the possibility of uh, lower interest rates and also about the possibility of a weakening economy. So that was bad news on the whole for the markets and indeed for the value of the US dollar as well on the foreign exchange markets. Elsewhere, we had uh, news out from Tiffany, that, of course, being the luxury jeweler famous for that little blue box and uh, they told us that it made uh, fairly bumper profits last year its annual profits that is uh, and of course because of that weaker dollar we've been seeing sales at its flagship store here in New York were up by some 17 percent as tourists came in to take advantage of lower prices Elsewhere, while well, there's been rumours about Citigroup America's biggest bank and the chance that possibly it could be cutting jobs. So that is something, of course, that analysts will be watching quite closely. And the bosses of the big three car makers met with President Bush at the White House to talk about alternative fuels and what they can do to actually cut back on gasoline consumption. What's going to happen in the next few days? Well, it's a fairly quiet week, but we have got some economic data coming out. We're going to have figures on consumer confidence this Tuesday and durable goods orders on Wednesday and some GDP figures on Thursday as well. So plenty there to keep the markets ruminating about the next step for interest rates. That was Darshini there. Well, let's remind you of how things are going in Asia now. Uh, trading in Japan and still very weak, I'm afraid to say, down over 100 points. Hong Kong not having a good time either. Singapore and South Korea, slightly better time, but not particularly exciting. Lackluster trade. A lot of it's to do with what happened in the US that Darshini has already mentioned, the housing market being a concern. One group, for example, Rinka Group, it supplies uh, cement blocks uh, to the US housing market. It shares really hit today in that part of the world. 80% of its earnings are made in America, so that's just one supplier to mention. And uh, that is all from World